Hi, I'm Peter Cowan, the Bee Whisperer. Here's another video about development of the drone and the queen bee. I hope you find it helpful. Drones are male bees. A uh, colony will raise several hundred drones each spring and early summer. Uh, drones are an inexpensive way for the colony to spread its genes to other co neighboring colonies. Uh, drones will start life as an unfertilized egg. Um, and that'll be also in an oversized cell. I'd like to point this out. The, uh, as a drone it comes from an unfertilized egg, the drone has no father, uh, but it does have a grandfather. So figure that one out. The egg, the unfertilized egg, will hatch on its fourth day and grow rapidly until its tenth day, at which point it will uh, spin its silk cocoon and get capped by the workers. So it's an extra day it takes to pupate. Uh, to reach pupation. Unlike the um, flat-capped worker cells, the cap of a drone cell is domed, kind of like a bullet. The drone emerges as an adult on day 24. These extra days of pupation uh, are key, uh, make them particularly attractive to varroa mites. Uh, and we'll talk about, uh, when we talk about mite control later, you'll, you'll see why. The only known role, role of drones is to mate with unmated queens on their mating flight. Uh, on the relatively warm days, drones will spend many hours on the wing in search of a mate. Drones will congregate in drone congregation areas, or DCAs. A DCA might contain hundreds or tens of thousands of drones. Uh, the drones will come from numerous local colonies and maybe of uh, all sorts of different races. Uh, drones will detect the queen in the drone congregation area by the presence of her pheromones. Had a great example of uh, bees, uh, drones detecting queens by their pheromones. I was doing a colony removal uh, from the exterior of a building in Ellsworth, Maine. The colony is quite large and full of bees, but I could tell that it's recently swarmed by the presence of numerous queen cells, uh, both hatched and unhatched. The, uh, in the process of the removal, I actually uh, sucked into the vacuum uh, at least three queen cells, one of which I sort of watched uh, emerge from the cell. So these queens were sucked into the vacuum, and after about an hour, I turned the vacuum off, and turned around and found a cloud of thousands of drones flying above that vacuum where the stream of exhaust air, um, which had been sucked through the cluster of bees, uh, was blowing into the air. The drones had detected those pheromones of the Virgin Queens and were searching for the queens, and so this cloud of drones were looking for where was that Virgin qu Queen that they could smell. Drones also have extremely large eyes, which will cover most of their head. That's going to help them spot the queen on her mating flight. Any drone which does mate with a queen is going to die, because his reproductive organs virtually explode uh, from his body in the process of mating. Drones which uh, fail to mate with a queen during the summer, uh, or during that day, are going to go out again the next day and try and find a queen, and then the next day, any day there's warm weather during the summer, the drones are going to be out there hoping to find a queen. They usually fly back to their own hive, but there's a significant amount of drifting of drones from one colony to the other. Guard bees don't see drones as a significant threat, uh, particularly during the summer months at least. Don't tend to stop them entering the wrong, wrong hive. This, of course, is a, a means of th spreading things like varroa mites. During times of food shortages, colonies will evict drones to um, save food stores. So it might be a drought during the summer or in the fall uh, when there's no more queens for mating flights. Uh, it seems as if the colony decides there's no purpose in keeping the drones around, and so they're going to kick them out to starve to death because it's a lot more, less expensive to raise new drones next year than it is to keep them going over the winter. Normally there's only one queen bee in each colony, 
the queen is a uh, fertile female and is the largest bee in the hive. She's got a particularly long abdomen. The queen's the mother of all the bees in the colony, um, yet doesn't rule the colony in any way at all. Uh, she has two critical roles to play. Primary function, of course, is to lay eggs. A good, well-fed queen is capable of laying two to 3,000 eggs in a single day. That's more than her own body weight. The other key role that the queen plays is binding the whole colony together with pheromones. The queen's capable of determining whether the egg that she lays is fertilized or not fertilized. Fertilized eggs will give rise to females and non-fertilized eggs will become uh, male. The queen herself, being female, uh, has come from a fertilized egg. So any egg that was destined to become a worker bee is also capable of becoming a queen bee. When a colony wants to produce a queen bee, a special large uh, wax cell is built in the comb. It's usual for the bees to start multiple queen cells at the same time. The queen cell is roughly three times the size of a worker cell, and instead of being oriented oriented horizontally, it's vertical, uh, with the opening down at the bottom. A fertilized egg is placed in the cell by the workers, or in some cases, the cell is built around an existing egg um, already in the comb, and they do that by destroying the surrounding cells. The egg hatches on its fourth day uh, after being laid. The small white larva is now fed continuously with that rich secretion of uh, royal jelly and unlike the larvae of the worker bee, they never change that diet. So the queen larva grows very rapidly um, on a diet of pure royal jelly. And at the age of eight days, she then spins her cocoon and sealed in the worker cell. It's a day quicker than the worker bee does. There it pupates and metamorph metamorphoses into a ferti fully fertile queen bee, um, which will emerge on its 15th to 16th day. So five days faster than a worker bee. Uh, once hatched, the young queen walks rapidly around the brood chamber and starts to emit an audible peep, peep, peep sound, uh, which is we refer to as piping. The young unhatched queens in other queen cells are going to uh, remarkably respond to that piping sound, the sort of a quack, quack, quack sound. Uh, and hearing that reply, the queen is going to pipe again, eliciting another quacking response. And that game of sort of Marco Polo, the deadly game of Marco Polo, comes to a pretty gruesome end when the uh, hatched queen finds the unhatched queen still sealed in a cell and tears it open and kills her sister by either biting her to death or stinging her to death. And after fetally wounding her rival, uh, she starts again to pipe and searching the rest of the colony and the next queen cell starts quacking back in response and she'll go around and kill that one too. If she comes across another queen that's already emerged uh, or her mother, she's going to fight to the death. And it's usually that younger queen which will um, live to rule the colony. The first day of the queen's life might be murderous, but uh, the carnage doesn't stop there. At the age of about five days, the new queen of the colony goes on her first mating flights. The first um, one of these is usually a very short orientation flight, uh, but then after a, um, a short while, she's going to fly off to these drone congregation areas. One, maybe two times, maybe occasionally three times she will do this. There, there can be anywhere to 10,000 drones flying around in that cloud between 50, 10 and 50 yards from the ground, and it might be 10 to 200 yards across. The queen will fly into this zone where those drones with their large eyes and smelling the pheromones will chase her until they eventually catch up with her. And once they've clasped her, they're going to mate with her on the wing. And that act of mating results in the drone's reproductive organs virtually exploding, and he drops down dead. And then she's caught by the next drone, and the next drone, and the next. And she might be there for up to half an hour, and mate with anything up to 30 drones. After that, she'll never mate again. Within a few days, to two weeks, the young mated queen will start to lay eggs. She has the ability of deciding whether or not to lay uh, fertilized or unfertilized eggs. And if she lays a fertilized egg, it'll develop into a female, and if it's unfertilized, it'll be male. 
Uh, she might live for four or five years, uh, but typically two to three years is more common. As the queen bees age, the pheromone level she produces is going to change. And at some point, these changes will uh, indicate to the colony that the queen is soon going to be out of being no longer in prime condition. Uh, in the meantime, the beekeeper wouldn't have a clue uh, and might still be very satisfied with the out output of that queen. Uh, but when this happened, the workers will uh, construct a single queen cell called a supersedure cell, and it's typically located right in the middle of a brood frame. A fertilized egg will be placed into that cell uh, by the workers, and the reigning queen takes no apparent notice at all of her daughter being groomed as a successor. Uh, in most cases, the supersedure of the new queen, that new queen is going to kill her mother within a very short time. But it's not uncommon for the colony, colony to go for most of the rest of the summer with two queens in the hive before eventually the daughter kills the mother. That can be frustrating to a beekeeper who, who sees no apparent problem, uh, especially if you've got spent a lot of money on an expensive new queen, um, only for the reigning queen to suddenly decline and start to only lay drone eggs. Then the colony is not in a position to successfully replace her. Well, I hope you found the video about the development and life of the drone and the queen of some help. Uh, if you did, don't forget to subscribe and click on uh, the like button and uh, tell your friends about it. I'm Peter Cowan, the Bee Whisperer. See you next time.